We do have some breaking news tonight. The same week that Washingtonians first get vaccinated for coronavirus, some bad news from the federal government. The next shipment of vaccines will be much smaller than originally expected. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm Regina on and I'm Tom Sherry. Mark and Whitney are off tonight. Washington State's coronavirus vaccine allocation is being cut by 40% next week. Our Casey Decker joins us live now with what we know. Casey. Yeah, Tom, first we should be clear that this does not affect that existing batch. Washington is still getting that first round, that 62,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Nothing's changed there, but it's the next shipment coming next week. That one will be significantly smaller. Now that one was initially supposed to be about 75,000 doses. Now it'll be closer to 45,000. This information was passed on to states by the CDC. In Idaho, their next shipment will go from about 17,000 to just under 10,000. Adding to the frustration, no one really knows why these allocations are being reduced. But Washington Governor Jay Inslee says it doesn't seem to be a problem with production on Pfizer's end, rather some sort of communication issue at the federal government. Obviously, this is frustrating to us to, you know, not have the shipment come when, when we were told by the federal government it was coming. But the good news here is there's no indication that there's some systemic long-term problem. Uh, having the production that, is, that we need is the most important thing. We heard Pfizer today uh, state that they have, the, they have the vials in the warehouse ready to ship. They're just waiting for the orders from the federal government. That's really good news. It, it doesn't appear that it's a production problem, at least according to Pfizer at the moment. So we're hoping that this is a communication glitch. Some good news, though, the Moderna vaccine is progressing, and the state secretary of health says if approved, Washington could receive a shipment of 128,000 doses of that one next week. He also says that whereas in the past we've had these vaccine dosage numbers about a month in advance, from now on it's going to be more like a week in advance. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Tom, Regina. All right, thanks, Casey. Well, across Washington State, SeaTac International Airport is keeping a runway open just for the FedEx shipments of the vaccine. The FAA is urging airports across the country to be extra alert, especially to the weather, to keep those vaccines safe. And the number of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine expected to arrive in Idaho next week has also been significantly reduced, with the state, uh, state now set to receive 44% less than the amount that was expected. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare says no explanation was given as to why the number of vaccines was dramatically reduced. Idaho Governor Brad Little responded to the statewide cutback, calling on Idahoans to remain vigilant in the fight against the virus. The vaccine efficacy rate for symptomatic COVID-19 infection was 94.1%. We also observed a dramatic reduction in severe cases. Moderna's coronavirus vaccine is on the verge of being approved for emergency use in the United States and the second vaccine designed to fight the virus. As hospitals across the country fill up, federal officials say they're ready to roll out almost 8 million doses of Moderna's vaccine as early as next week. Teenagers as young as 16 can get the Pfizer vaccine. Moderna is asking for emergency use authorization for people 18 and older. And tomorrow, Vice President Mike Pence is set to get the vaccine. The White House reports he and his wife Karen will receive the shots. Next week, President-elect Joe Biden is also set to get the vaccine publicly. Well, we know that this is a whole lot of information about this new COVID-19 vaccine. And that is why here at CREM, we created the vaccine team. So do you have a vaccine question that you'd like to ask? You can always text us your question at 509-448-2000. And for the latest vaccine updates so that you can stay up to speed, just text the word vaccine to that same number and we'll send a link right to your phone. Well, today, the Panhandle Health District is reporting 196 new COVID-19 cases, 146 people have died from the virus in North Idaho, and 101 of those deaths were in Kootenai County alone. The health district is also reporting 84 people in the hospital. Kootenai Health is pausing elective surgeries through January, 12, uh, January 10th amid record numbers of COVID-19 hospitalizations. Kootenai Health also says the hospital is also facing staffing challenges as COVID-19 continues to spread in northern Idaho. 
The changes that uh, take effect at Kootenai Health today, they do not affect screening and imaging procedures that occur in outpatient settings. We're talking about colonoscopies, mammograms, cardiac stress tests, ultrasounds, and similar procedures. And also today, there are 575 new coronavirus cases in Spokane County. Three new deaths have been reported. The Spokane Regional Health District is also reporting there are 88 people in the hospital. Turning to weather now, Tom, it was a uh, it was chilly but rainy as well. But I did see a little a, a smidge of sunshine. Yeah, today, and which I know nice. it was chilly, but not the cold not that the we coldest. normally yeah. get. You know, mild. North, yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're well above the average high temperature of 32 degrees right now. We're at 38, and you can see the wind is out of the south at seven miles per hour. We've got a little bit of light rain in southern Spokane County. Most of it, though, occurring in northern Whitman County, and a few snow showers. Very isolated snow showers moving through Kootenai County right now over in northern Idaho. Well, we'll look for an overnight low of 30 degrees tonight. It is going to be breezy with some rain developing late tomorrow in the daytime. I think more likely in the evening, but again, much warmer than average. We'll look for a daytime high of 40 and the warmest temperatures of the season are going to be this weekend. Rain showers uh, Saturday night into Sunday. Sunday's high temperature 48 degrees. I'll track the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. It has been five months since Congress passed its last COVID spending package. Now they're under pressure to get something done soon. Last week, some 885,000 Americans filed new unemployment claims, and th that number rising for the second straight week now to a level not seen since September. The Senate bill includes a $300 weekly federal unemployment benefit for four months, and the roughly $908 billion measure would put money in most Americans' pockets in the form of a stimulus check of up to $700. The bill also contains rental assistance, food assistance, money for schools and vaccine distribution, and a $300 billion aid for small businesses. Now. Quest Sports Desk. Well, not one, but two big pieces of news out of Gonzaga today as the team has scheduled the game against number 17 ranked Virginia on December 26. That will air right here on Krem. They also announced that six foot ten recruit Ben Gregg will enroll early at the school and be eligible to play this season. On top of all of that, Mark Few spoke with the media today and Brenna Green joining us now for more of that. Hey there, Brenna. Hi, Regina. Yeah, lots of good news for Gonzaga today, but the med main headline from Mark Few's media availability was the impact taking a pause due to COVID-19 had on his program. Remember, they play right here on Krem on Saturday against number three ranked Iowa. Few painted quite a picture of what the last few weeks have been like for his team. It has not helped us in any way, shape or form. Rest can sometimes be beneficial, but rest because of COVID yeah, there aren't many silver linings in that for Mark Few. This is probably in the 20 years I've been coaching the biggest challenge. I mean, I, I faced as a as a head coach. In fact, tonight will be the first time the entire team has practiced together since the day before the Baylor game. Last night, a smaller group practiced and Few didn't mince words about how it went. That looked like our first practice in the fall with the balls going everywhere and people leaning over and grabbing their uh, shorts, it's uh, definitely a huge concern. Conditioning is the first thing that comes to mind as something that has taken a hit due to Gonzaga's break, but Few says it has taken a toll mentally for his players as well. I don't know that everybody understands just how isolated and, and uh, that they are from being around other people, quite frankly. And then when we have you know, the situations that come up, uh, and then we, we, we totally isolate in a room by themselves. It's not easy, and it's something that we're very much in touch with our guys about. And so the Zags push on with a high-ranked opponent next in Iowa, perhaps with an even heightened sense of appreciation than when the season began. I'm just continually amazed about the resiliency, um, the drive, the dedication, the the wherewithal that these guys they, uh, want to keep playing and and when they do get their opportunities, man, they're overjoyed to get out on the floor and be around each other and go out and play the game they love.
Gonzaga and Iowa tip at 9 a.m. Saturday right here on Creme. We'll have a Bulldog Madness special about the contest at 830 right before the game. So just get up a smidge earlier and check that out. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brenna. Well, a new fire truck arrived in Malden today. The town lost its only fire truck in the Bab Road fire last summer. What the mayor has to say about the town's new addition when we come back.